In this final video, I'm going to try to talk a little bit more about different types of pad leak and also be more definitive about the readout from the indicator as to what constitutes a really bad leak and what uh, might be acceptable. We'll go back to the A key, which if you remember, <clears throat> I found a small leak in. When I took the key off and had a look, I found a little tiny bit of a particle of grit or something lurking right on the impression line at the back. I blew that off and it's been perfectly okay since. There's really nothing wrong with that pad at all. Uh, <clears throat> but it was it indicated quite a large leak. And it just shows a small particle of dirt like that will cause such a leak and be noticeable to the player. The main kinds of leak um, are first of all a wonky pad. That's to say one that's slightly gone out of shape. It's no longer touching the tone hole all around. Um, when you when you close the key and that might be because it's a brand new pad and it hasn't the ironing process hasn't really been finished or it might be an old pad that's been there for a long time and has gradually altered its shape with changes in climate and so on um, so that's one kind another kind of leak is caused obviously by um, clutches that are not adjusted properly that's something that you easily get right um, another kind of course is pinholes in the pad, which you can't always see. Um, certainly they won't be picked up by the feeler. Likewise, tears in the pad. Tears are, are, are usually more obvious and um, you can usually see those. Pinholes, not necessarily. Then there's another type which I've mentioned, which is um, impossible to find with the feeler. And that's where the grommet on an open hole key is not tight or it's lost its shape, gone out of its shape. Uh, maybe it's an old grommet and it's been in and out hundreds of times and it's now uh, due for replacement, really. Uh, that can leak and it'll leak around the, the, the either the inside or the outside surface of the grommet and f the air will find its way around the, underneath the pad and then come out around the edge. And so that's something to, to watch. If you, get the, if you get a leak that cannot be stopped by pressing harder on the key then it's either that one or it's the pinhole um, then very occasionally you get the the leak around the, the, the soldered tone hole I did once have a flute it's quite an old flute and it had soldered tone holes and I found the whole thing was leaking from end to end even though the pads all look quite new and um, I ruled out the pads in the end and started looking at the tone holes and found that there, there was a bit of porosity around some of them and what you do then is you get a bit of rubber, a bit of inner tube or something to cover the turn hole, put the probe down and just test in the normal way. And if you find a leak, then it's got to be here. And so they all had to come off and be resoldered. Evidently, the manufacturer had used lead solder and lead and silver, of course, eat one another given enough time. But that's very rare. Um, there's another kind of leak which... Um, you need to be aware of on open hole keys and that of course is the connection between the finger and the key itself. That's why I use this insulating tape to make sure that I have got a good seal underneath my finger. Now it's quite instructive just to remove that and see what happens if I just use a finger. So I'll finger this A with the normal um, middle finger and we'll see what the difference is. Well, it's not too bad. I mean, there's a little bit of a leak there. I'm just fingering it lightly as you would. Let's just put the tape back for comparison. See, that's 100%. So that proved my finger was leaking. Let's try now with the index finger. Now, the index finger on most of us... Um, will be a little bit rougher because it's the one that does all the hard work in life if you think about it, all the picking up of things. The index finger is the one that, if, it's, if, if your hands are at all rough, that's the finger that will be the roughest. So let's try with that one. Yeah, an obvious leak. That would be very noticeable. Well, well I can hardly cover it at all. Yeah. I mean, a player with fingers like that would notice. Just looking at my finger, I can't see anything 
untoward on it. There are no cuts, no abrasions. It's just that the the um, what do you call them? The lines, the grooves on the skin are perhaps a little bit more pronounced on that finger. I don't know, but anyway, that's that's no good. So that's why you have to use a piece of tape to cover those holes in order to be able to test the pads independently. Um, right, now, the indicator itself, I said that last one was a bad leak. So how bad is bad? What can we tolerate on here? I wouldn't tolerate that. A general rule is if the separation of the, of the two columns is about, say, four inches, three to four inches, about that much, if you can count up to 20, 20 seconds, that's a slow count of 20, then before they go back to zero, that rate of leak is probably acceptable, especially in the foot joint. It, <clears throat> it's a bit questionable up this end of the flute. I would probably prefer to be able to count up to, say, 30 or 40 before they finally close. That would be acceptable. But anything less than that, if they go down quickly like that, that's a bad leak and you've got to do something about it. So you can see that the ferret is operating in a range um, of leakage that is appropriate to the flute. The quick leak will be noticed by the player and especially if there are two or three of them all on the same instrument. You know, if you've got say that one, that one, that one leaking, oh she'll know about it. She'll know there's something wrong somewhere with the flute. Although she might not know exactly where it is, um, she'll know that there's something wrong and the flute needs to go to the repair person to, to be fixed. So there you have it. This is an invariably useful tool. I, I couldn't do any flute repair work without it. I couldn't do any serious pad work without it. Um, there are other methods. Of course, the feeler is well known. You need that anyway, because if you do find a, a, a pad that's not level, you need to be able to go around and find where it is. Although, having said that, this is quite useful. If you get the sort of leak where you can stop it with a little bit more finger pressure, then you'll know it's a pad that's not level. If you need a lot of finger pressure to do, to do that, to stop it, the leak is likely to be at the back of the pad. If you need only a very little finger pressure, extra finger pressure, then the leak is more likely to be at the front of the pad. Um, there's a geometrical reason for that, which is fairly obvious, but um, that, yeah, that, that's a, a good help, it's a good guide. Um, there is a, a gadget which is a, a bulb, a light on the end of a stick which you can put up and down the flute. I don't think those work very well. They'll give you a kind of um, rough idea of which pad might be leaking. Um, if there's a leak, obviously you get a bright spot which you can see, but uh, but they won't find pinholes and they won't find little bits of dirt and um, all those other things that I've mentioned. You really, for that, you need a, pre a proper pressure tester like the ferret. So there you have it, the Wessel Flute Ferret. Do get one, I think you won't regret it. They're very, very useful indeed.